My first recipe is an unconventional take on a traditional shepherd's pie. It includes olives, butternut squash, plus one of our most undervalued meats, goat. It's called goat's herb pie, of course. I lived in Cyprus for six years, and I like to use Mediterranean flavors when I'm baking. But there was one particular meat in Cyprus that everybody loved, and in Britain, is largely ignored. But cooked properly, it has rich, full flavor, and I really want to use it in one of my recipes. But first, I'm going to see if I can convince the locals here in Preston to try this Mediterranean meat without telling them what it is. It's okay. What do you think? No, you it say, tastes like beef. It tastes like beef to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's beef, yeah. It's actually goat. Is it? Yeah. It's quite nice. Yeah, I like it. Beef. It's goat. Goat. Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, it's nice. What do you think of it? It's really good. Mm, really nice. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. It's goat. Not bad. Okay. It's like coral. It's goat. Oh, right. Well, time for everything. <laughs> do you like the flavour, though? Yeah, I do. Very Are you cool. surprised? Yeah, I am, yeah. More satisfied with customers. Mm, very, very nice. What's it taste like? Lamb. It does taste mm. like lamb. Do you know what it is? No. Goat. Mm -hmm. It's exactly okay. It's very yeah. similar, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, delicious, yeah. Well, I've brought the taste of Cyprus to Preston. Now I think it's time to delve deeper into the world of goat. Thanks to the rising popularity of goat's cheese and milk, there are now quite a few dairy goat herds around the UK. In Lancaster, Sharon Peacock raises a very special type of goat bread specifically for meat. It's the boa goat. Alongside her husband, she now owns one of the country's longest established pedigree meat goat herds. Do you enjoy this lifestyle? Yeah, I've been doing it 13 years now and got busier and busier. We started with four goats in 2000 and there were 420 at height last summer. <laughs> so it's gone up a little bit since then. Sharon's goats are free to graze the fields, but today some of the herd have been brought into the barn for a bit of a health check. And as Sharon tells me, these goats are pretty special. We're about one of the biggest producers in the country of this type of breed. We're looking for a meat breed. This is the, the boa goat, yep. and it's pretty much the, the world's only meat goat, specifically. We don't do any dairy at all. That's taken from a different sort of goat. Much like cows, there's dairy cows and meat cows. Yep. And this is the same thing. Most of mine are crossbreds, um, so this is why we get a mixture of colours and patterns on them. Yeah. A nice one should be white with the brown head. That's what we're looking for. They know where they're going, don't they? We do this every day. We have to do some sort of health check every day. So they are used to it. It's part of their routine. Yeah. It doesn't mean they'll comply every day, but they do know what they're supposed to do. That's brilliant. They're a good-looking animal. I think they're, uh, they are different to sheep. They seem to have more character than sheep. To keep the goats in tip-top condition, they're regularly given a mineral drink. So you're holding around a chest and a uh, shoulder. Yeah. Put the hand under a chin, and you almost push down with that hand. I see. Pop the gun in it. The goats are used to this and seem to take it all in their stride. OK. It's cheating just doing the gate, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Next, it's my turn, and I'm a tad apprehensive, to say the least. Uh, it looks fairly straightforward, but this is the sort of people... They do, they do it every day, you we know. We make this look easy. Yeah, you do make it look very easy, but... Okay. Can I get some more and we'll can have I, a can try? I, can I try it on this one here? Yeah, you can try that one. <laughs> Just kidding. Get it? It's more. only for the adults today, so Sharon finds me one a little bit more my size. So I do know them all individually. I know um, which ones are like what, what characters they have. That's it. One down and around 200 to go. So what is it about goat herding that appeals to Sharon? We're neither of us farmers by background. Yeah. Um, and we... I guess we wanted the good life, really. We were going to have one of each, you know, have a cow and a sheep and a pig and all the things, and we did a bit of research and just picked a couple of goats, really, for our own consumption. Yeah. Um, people took all that meat from us, so we bought some more. They took all that, so we bought some more. And really, we almost fell into this gap in the market. Sweaty work, though. It's like being back in the bakery. Job done. It's time to let the does and their kids back into the field.
I'm comfortable with the, with the fact that I have a little bit of insight into how you rear these beautiful animals, but there's another side which I'm dying to try, and that's to eat it. Do you have any meat here? Yeah, and I've got some cooked ready for you to have a try of. Sharon has invited me into the farm kitchen, and she's laid on a banquet of goat meat cuts for me to sample. A whole roll shoulder, goat chops, sausages and burgers. Do you want a piece of sausage? Delicious. It's a proper... What I, I've had a lot of meat artisan sausage. sausages. Yeah, and you know, real artisan sausage from a good producer. Yeah. That is one of those. It's up there. The flavour is fantastic. Time to try the burger. That's definitely a happy face. Yeah, it is. Um, there's just more to it. it it's it, got it's some more complex. To it. yeah. yeah, it's more complex than a, a conventional beef burger. Mm -hmm. Next, it's the goat chops. Wow. It's succulent. It's yeah. really, it's meaty. You want, you have to chew it to break it down slightly, but the flavour of that, stunning. Finally, the roasted goat shoulder, which looks like it would be spot on for a Sunday lunch. It just tastes so good. Definitely. I mean, the the the, the closest thing, if people have never tried it before, is definitely lamb. Yeah, definitely. Um, and if you like lamb, you'll love goat. I think that's the obvious obvious thing. And you'd still have that with a bit of mint sauce. Yeah, mint sauce, exactly the same. Nice roast dinner, roast potatoes, peas on there. Bit of mint sauce, made up. I've had such an informative day today with all the different cuts of meat that I've had, the burgers, the sausages, the shoulders, they all taste fantastic. And this will be a fantastic component part in my recipe. I'm joined now by our goat farmer, Sharon. Hello, Sharon. Hi, are you well? How are the, how are the little fellas getting on? Not so bad. No, it's, uh, it's good. They look well. I still have nightmares about putting, uh, lifting the goat's horns actually between my legs. <laughs> I still have, night I have terrible nightmares about that. Now, I'm actually going to cook you something. I'm going to use the goat that I promised I was going to use. And I've got minced goat here. Yeah. I'm going to make a goat herder's pie. Now, the first thing I've got to do is put some heat on, a little bit of oil in the pan, I mean, how much, how much goat do you actually eat a week yourselves? Probably five or six nights a week we have goat really? from description. Because we're producing it ourselves and why, why go buying stuff when we can produce our own? You know, obviously we found when we spoke to people, a lot of people didn't know what it was. And initially they, they tried it. And then when we told them, actually went, oh, that's really nice, that lamb. And then when yeah. we told them it was goat, there was an instant recoil, you know, which really yeah, surprised me. There's, there's almost this fixed ideas about what it's going to be like yeah. in advance without even trying it. And, it seems um, such a shame, you know, that they do it like that, you know? Yeah, it's preconceived it, ideas and they're so fixed. I know, um, it's bad. We're working on it. <laughs> yeah, but you've, got to, you've got to work on it because the stuff's good. Now, what I'm going to do here, I've got some celery and I've got some onion, which you're going to go straight in the pan. I need to sweat down the onion and celery before adding diced butternut squash to soften. Then it's on to the seasoning. I've got some garlic, I've got some anchovy, a little bit of salt, get my pestle and mortar, pop the garlic cloves in there and the anchovy. And again, the anchovy really adds that little bit of sharpness to it as well, a little bit of salt in there. And then crush this down. Are you growing any garlic there? Yeah, we do grow our own garlic, so. Oh, that's all right. You seem pretty much self-sufficient. It was like going back to the good life. We were only discussing this morning that we've not bought food for months. We're You're joking, really? On the food, yeah, because we've Everything. got a big garden, yeah. I find that incredible. Add the anchovy and garlic mixture to the veg. Cook gently until the anchovies melt and then set the contents of the pan aside. Now it's time for the meat to go in the pan. This pie is designed with goat mince in mind, but don't worry, if you can't get hold of any, you can always substitute lamb, beef, or even veggie mince instead. I mean, the, the whole thing about the goat and what really surprised me, because I'll be honest, I tried a little bit of goat when I was in Cyprus. Yeah. And when I was over there at the time, I thought, it was all right, you know, and to be honest, probably because I didn't know what I was eating. No, the goat's not available enough in this country. It's harder to farm. 
so the, yeah. the farmers farm easier animals, the sheep and the cows and things, and that's become our staple. Um, but, but now goat is a little bit available. Do you think it's because they just, people just can't get hold of it in supermarkets? That's the main reason. Next, in go the olives. The olives are that Mediterranean style of things. This is the reason most people would use goat in the Mediterranean. Therefore, a little few olives in there as well, not going to go amiss. I'm going to add some cinnamon again. That sort of Middle Eastern feel coming from that part of the world. Bit of flour. Got to cook this out. The flour is thickening it, presumably. Yeah. So, right. Well, I found that this meat actually wasn't as lean as I thought it was going to be. It's still got some fat in it's there. It's got you know? enough in it to sweeten it and tenderise it. Um, the boa goat, the breed we use, does have a little bit more fat in it um, than some of the more traditional goat meat. Is that why it's been picked as a meat goat? It's been goat? bred as a meat goat, and it has got that higher fat content because that's what tenderises the meat and sweetens it, which is some of the other things, the issues we get with goat meat. People think it'll be tough. Yeah. They've heard goat meat's tough. Yes. Um, but this boa goat meat's not tough because of that fat content. The smell is gorgeous. It is akin to lamb. You wouldn't know what you were doing, really. I'm also going to put some stock in there as well. Now I'm going to add the red wine to this, this richness of the red wine. Don't put rubbish red wine in there. If you drink it, then it goes in. If you wouldn't drink it, then don't put it in your dish. Now you're going to reduce this down. Oh, that heady mix of wine, the stock, the goat, the olives. It does smell fantastic. Now add the cooked butternut squash mixture back to the pan and cook out for 10 to 20 minutes so the flavours infuse. You're going to add some fresh rosemary to this as well. I love rosemary. Again, rosemary with lamb, rosemary with goat. Yeah, rosemary, mint, all the same sort of things as you'd put on lamb. And then leave that to cook out. Now, all I've got down here is some mash. You can add cream to this if you want to, or butter, just to enrich it a little bit more. Mash it all down together. I presume you've peeled your potatoes. <laughs> I always leave my skins on. Do you leave mash, your skins yeah. on when you do mashed potato? Mash. Definitely lumpy mash. What sort of potato do you use, then? Whichever one's my husband's planted in the garden. <laughs> um, it's like the good life, isn't it? I can't remember what he said he'd put in this time. Now, all I'm going to do, I've got some goat's cheese. I don't know whether this one's yours as well. It's not, no, we don't do any milking, just a meat herd. So I've got some goat's cheese going through this as well. Now, it's quite rough. I could make this really smooth by adding some cream or some milk and then really take it nice and smooth and pummel it. But I'm going to keep it quite rough. Get myself a spoon and just spoon out all these ingredients first. Get them straight into the bottom. It smells fantastic with that rosemary in there as well. Get all that liquid in there. It's key that you get that liquid. It's looking good. It does look good. Oh, yes. Takes me back when I was a kid. Now get your mash. Drop it onto the top. Now, obviously, this is an um, alternative to shepherd's pie, which has been around for many, many years. So, again, once I've got my mash over there in one big lump, get a fork and then just spread it over the top. Nice and even. Really pack that down. Look at that. Rough and ready. Bit of Parmesan. OK, this goes into the oven at 190 for 35 minutes. And straight in, it's going to go. Look at that. It's looking good. That is a beautiful goat herd pie. Studded with juicy olives and packed with meaty flavour, my goat's head pie is the perfect hearty winter warmer. <laughs>